Welcome to Disrupt, a series about how artists who identify as disabled are challenging outdated stereotypes about their community. I'm your host, Taylor Olson, he, they pronouns, and I'm a bisexual filmmaker from Halifax, Nova Scotia, living with a history of eating disorders and CPTSD. Our second show will feature more of the best and brightest creatives across Canada. These artists work in every genre, including the beautiful world of drag. I want you to meet Mr. Capital Pride 2022, Dr. Andrew Box. He's a singing, storytelling drag king, originally hailing from Newfoundland, but now living in Ottawa. Dr. Andrew Box is proudly transgender and lives with a debilitating form of ulcerative colitis. He performs on stage with an incredible seven-piece band, The Pronouns. Now, I know you can't wait to hear more. So, here is their song, Femme Nem, a rallying cry for any and anyone who identifies as a woman. Dr. Androbox and the pronouns perform before the altar in a converted church. A progress pride flag hangs proudly from the altar. Dr. Androbox sports short black hair and a close cropped beard. He wears a shiny headband, silver vest, and baggy gold pants. And come back to the stage, Evelyn Jessica Cianarato. Evelyn and Christina run onto the stage. Evelyn takes center stage while Christina takes stage left. Evelyn has long brown hair, wears dark-rimmed glasses, a light-modeled sport coat, and light-patterned leggings. The backing band consists of a pianist, lead and bass guitarists, a drummer, a saxophonist, a trumpeter, and a trombonist. Evelyn and Christina switch places. Christina has long black hair, light rimmed glasses, and a pink dress with circles enclosing dark dots. They all dance and clap to the backbeat. Dr. Androbox takes center stage, switching places with Christina. Singers step back and forth, clapping high and low in concert. The singers take a long bow.
Well, that song's going on the hype playlist. Femme Them is from the EP Fluid Ditties, and Dr. Randerbox and the Pronouns hope to take it on the road very soon. More? Bring on the talent, you say? Well, our next rising star is from Scarborough, Ontario, Salva Kershid. Salva is making a name for themselves in the world of spoken word poetry. They are a non-binary, neurodivergent artist of Pakistani ancestry. Salva won their first poetry slam in 2017 with this heartfelt homage to their childhood best friend. Dear Nikki, do you remember grade three? You gave me the nickname Salvus because my stupid impressions were your loudest obsession. You'd offer to sharpen my pencil or lend me your eraser just so I would say... They pull up the left corner of their mouth. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was the first nickname I had that wasn't about my height. I was the shortest in that class. It was easy to pick on me for it, but you made it just a little bit harder for them by giving them all your classic Nikki sass. So what if she's short? Her brain is bigger than yours. <laughs> Do you remember grade four? You came over to my house and we blew all our money on sour skittles at that corner store. You always held my hand when we crossed the street because you were scared the cars wouldn't see me and run me over. <laughs> Do you remember grade five? We used to play American Idol at Hayat's house, but I didn't want to sing, so I was always either Simon or Randy. And that's probably why no one else could stand me, but it made you laugh. <laughs> you would sing, big girls don't cry or unfaithful, and I would pick one of two phrases. They wave their fingers before their face. That was absolutely dreadful. It's a no from me. Or, yo, dog, that was sick. I'm going to see you in Hollywood. <laughs> I am and have always been a terrible impressionist, but you were always OK with who I was and who I wasn't. Do you remember grade six? You and our friends entered the talent show to dance to Ponda Replay, but I was too embarrassed to dance, so you told everyone I was your manager so I could still feel included. <laughs> I didn't really know what a manager did, so I just kind of hung around when you guys were practicing at recess. And anytime someone got too close, I would intercept them and say, ma'am, hands off the merchandise. They hold their hand out before <laughs> them in a stop gesture. <laughs> I remember a smile on your face the day you told me I would be your actual manager someday. You were going to be the next Rihanna. Do you remember the last time we saw each other? Because I don't. <laughs> And I'm sorry that I don't. Three days ago, I was thinking about you. I wanted to message you to catch up. I actually wanted to say thank you, but I didn't. <laughs> Two days ago, I found out I didn't have the option anymore. And yesterday, I found out you were the one who took that option away. I have always known you to be the strong one, but unlike me, you were a natural born performer. Happy was the role you got without auditioning. Your happy was a two-way mirror only you could see through your compassion. A vampire never seeing its own reflection. Your laughter, the answer to every question I didn't know you needed me to ask. Maybe if I had done a better impression of a friend, you wouldn't have been six feet under the impression that you weren't worth fighting for. I wonder if I would still be here if you weren't there to hold my hand. I wonder if you would still be here if I had just reached out for yours when I still had the chance. I'm sorry that I haven't seen you. I'm sorry that I didn't see you. I'm sorry I let life run you over. I'm going to spend the rest of my life wishing I had held your hand the way you held mine. Thank you for being there for me at a time that I had no one. And I'm so, I'm so fucking sorry I couldn't have been there for you. Love always, Salvis. They leave the stage. Aside from that beautiful poem, Salva has also become an advocate for disability justice. Their debut chapbook, Hello, My Name is Other, is to be published next year. If you're having fun so far, stick around, because we have more amazing artists to introduce you to when we come back on Disrupt. Welcome back to Disrupt. Riley Rain is another multi-talented Canadian who likes to explore topics a lot of folks would rather avoid, like... For instance, mental illness. Riley's an accomplished actor, writer, and composer based in Halifax, and they are the creator of Brainstorm, a mind-blowing song cycle about bipolar disorder. Riley wanted to create a piece of art that authentically captured their personal experience with bipolar disorder. Buckle up, here's Brainstorm. Blackness gives way to pulsing kaleidoscopic patterns. Then, brightly lit rocks and grass. On a stage, Riley Rain stands before a microphone, playing their guitar. Behind them, a drummer wears headphones and a mask with large black eyes. Images and words are projected on a large screen behind them. Take a breath. Slow down again. 
expanding light patterns swirl. Riley, with short hair and a black denim shirt, steps back from the mic and sways as they play. They step back to the mic. Riley backs away from the microphone. I was blessed to see Brainstorm live in Halifax, and it truly blew me away. Riley is now working on a version of Brainstorm that will become a 45-minute show. Unreal stuff. Don't reach for that remote. Next up is a theater piece that is unlike anything I've seen before. When we come back on Disrupt. Welcome back to Disrupt. Many of the artists you'll meet in our series Disrupt are pioneers, exploring territory that's never been explored before. That includes Landon Kuruntz. Landon is a deaf performer who is bilingual in English and American Sign Language. He is a huge advocate for deaf-led projects and is fighting for sign language to be seen as an art and for deaf culture to be seen as, well, just that, culture. For your pleasure, here's a theater piece Landon created to appeal to both deaf and hearing audiences. Check it out. Wearing a black t-shirt, Landon faces forward. He swirls his hands around each other, then spreads them out before him, representing a tree growing branches. He repeats the movements. 
He holds his arms at a right angle, left arm upward, right arm meeting at the elbow, representing the grown tree. He holds his arms out at his sides, fingers spread, slowly swaying like a tree in a breeze. He places his left hand by his right and slowly spreads his fingers open like a leaf. He covers his face, then slowly spreads his hands out, portraying the leaf unfurling. He again places his left hand by his right in leaf pose and sways it back and forth as he lowers it. He places his left arm in tree pose and uses his right index finger to trace the leaf's fall. He puts his left arm behind him, still tracing the leaf's fall, then holds it across him, lowering his finger until it reaches his lake surface arm. He spreads his right hand in leaf pose and again lowers it to his wavy left arm. He frames his face with his hands, shaking back and forth, then levels his arms before him, letting his head settle on the surface. He drops his arms. Holding his left hand horizontal, he traces his right up towards it, two fingers wiggling like a mink's hind legs. He holds his waving arms over his head and looks up toward the leaf floating on the surface. He holds his right hand up, fingers bent, representing the mink. He holds his left hand out in leaf pose, moves his right hand to it, and knocks it in the air. The leaf floats back down, and the mink knocks it into the air again. And again. Landon holds his left hand horizontal and moves it away from his mink hand, now swimming downward. The mink moves back up toward the lake surface. Then he holds his waving hands above his head and quickly moves them below as if he's breaching the water's surface. He holds his left hand in leaf pose for a moment, then holds his arms at chest level and turns to his left. He draws a square in the air with his fingers, shows the tree pose for a moment, then faces forward and walks his right hand across the ground of his left. Dropping his arms, he mimes zipping up a coat and closing the straps of a backpack across him. He swings his arms as if hiking, then mimes turning a hat on his head by the brim, putting on goggles, and pulling on a strap across his chest. He returns to hiking. He holds his left hand level before his face and moves his right back and forth, like waves lapping on a lakeshore. He shows the mink poking above the lake surface. He hikes, holding the strap, then spots something. He stops, smirks, raises his eyebrows, and mimes leveling a rifle. He makes a circle with his hands, then crosses his fingers, then his arms, like a targeting reticle. Landon puts his hands in mink pose, then plays the mink looking around. He spots the hunter, snarls, and pulls his hands out from his eyes. As the hunter, Landon takes aim cocks the rifle, and shoots. He moves his right fist through his open left hand, showing the bullet leaving the barrel. He quickly spins his right index finger around like a bullet, then slows down into slow motion. Holding his left hand up as the mink, he moves his right bullet finger toward it, then replaces the left hand with his head. The bullet finger makes contact, and he snaps his head back. He sinks his head below the surface of his arms, eyes closed, then slowly waves his arms like flailing forelegs. Holding his left arm before his face, he traces the mink's descent with his right hand. He performs the sinking mink in close-up again, then traces it to the lake bottom. Holding his arms before him, he slowly settles his head on the bottom. Resting his left leaf hand on the lake's surface of his right, he pulls it below the surface. Framing his leaf head with waving fingers, he then moves his hands up across his face as the leaf sinks below. He shows the sinking leaf in close-up, then holds his left arm level as the lake bottom, while his waving right fingers show the leaf sinking toward it. He again shows the sinking leaf in close-up, then levels his arms and moves his head toward them. Holding his left arm level, he holds the right in leaf pose, undulating on the bottom. 
He holds his right hand up, palm inward, and moves his left hand away several times in a waving motion, as if the leaf is decomposing, before holding his hands together and opening them, right hand horizontal, left hand vertical, showing the remains of the leaf and mink together. Talk about original and moving. Lendon Kuruntz is now producing his first play in English and American Sign Language. It's called A Hundred Years of Darkness and premiered in Calgary in March 2023. And on that exciting note, that's it for our second episode of Disrupt. I'm Taylor Olson, and I'll be back next week with another lineup of talent that will shake things up. Director and host, Taylor Olson. Producer, Rachel Bauer. Production manager, Lynn Matheson. Director of Photography, Scott Barrington. Location Sound, Eric Southey. Described Video, Mark Phoenix. Writers, Christine McLean and Taylor Olson. Production Designer, Jackson Noble. Editor, Reese Waters. Assistant Editor, Kelly Rose. Assistant Director, Spencer McKay. Third Assistant Director, Jay McManus. Makeup Artist, Jennifer Lee Murphy. Composer, Jordell Downey. Artist Curator, April Hubbard. Camera assistants, Kelly Rose and DJ Giles. Sound assistant, KJ Lewis. Assistant production designer, Brandon Boyd. Production assistant, Jeff Harrow. Logo design, Daniel Jardine. Legal services, David C. Perlmutter. Inclusive mentorship coordinators, Rachel Bauer, Lynn Matheson, and Teamwork Cooperative. Special thanks, Art Pays Me. Produced in association with Accessible Media Inc. Integrated described video consultant, M. Williams. Copyright 2023, Accessible Media, Inc. An AMI original production.